Hey everyone, Greg Alfrank here. Today we're going to be talking about affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is one of the oldest ways to make money online and perhaps without a doubt, the most popular affiliate program in the entire world is the Amazon Associates program. And while affiliate marketing can be a fantastic way to make a ton of money, whether it's part-time or full-time with what you're working on, it is actually pretty hard to do. It is harder than most people make it out to be. And the reason why that is, why it is hard, is because usually you're not going to see results very quick. Usually it can take six to even 15 months before you see any results at all in affiliate marketing. And this causes a lot of burnout amongst the community. People who are first trying it are really taking a swing at it. It's a lot of delayed gratification. So in this video, let's talk about how you can get over that hump of delayed gratification by explaining what affiliate marketing is, what the Amazon program is, and how you can take advantage of this money-making opportunity. And at the end of this video, if you stick around, and this might be a long video, if you stick around, there is a bonus at the end where I talk about how you can actually make affiliate uh, money in affiliate marketing from day one using a simple trick and a few low-hanging fruit slash quick win opportunities that we'll talk about at the end of the video. So let's get started and talk about what is affiliate marketing. <laughs> Hey everyone, Greg Elferink from Empire Flippers. We are the number one largest curated marketplace in the world when it comes to buying and selling online businesses. So as I mentioned, we're gonna be talking about affiliate marketing today. And I've already said that affiliate marketing is one of the oldest ways you can make money on the internet. It is a very, very powerful strategy and often low cost, but as I mentioned, could take quite a long time to do. So first let's talk about what affiliate marketing really is at a 30,000 foot view. The 30,000 foot view of this make money uh, online uh, method is you're basically a salesperson. You sign up to be a salesperson for a company selling a product or a service. Every time you sell that product or service, that company will pay you a small commission as part of their advertising budget, which are technically your profit, your earnings. So how it works is you have an affiliate link, you sign up for an affiliate program, the program will give you a specialized, unique ID that you can use. And whenever you publish that link somewhere on the internet, someone clicks that link, they go to the site and they buy something, you will get paid. And how they know it's you who sent that traffic is the affiliate link creates what is called a cookie. The cookie lives on your browser, it's just a little piece of code, and it has a time frame of how long it's gonna live on that browser. For some, a program like Amazon Associates, that time frame is 24 hours. So anything, anyone that clicks that Amazon affiliate link and goes to Amazon, anything they buy within that next 24 hour window, as long as it's on that browser, will be attributed to you, that you sold that product for them. Now, most other affiliate programs have much longer uh, uh, cookie timeframes. Some of them as long as 90 days or even six months, depending on what the product or service is. Amazon is the most popular one though, so I'm probably going to be using them for most of my examples here. And I'm going to touch a little bit on why you probably shouldn't use Amazon as well later on in your affiliate marketing career. But anyways, that is exactly what it is. Uh, you get a special link, cookies the, the, the person who clicks that link, and if they sell something, you get a commission off of it. And that's it. That's basically affiliate marketing, how the business works. And what this allows you to do is, unlike other business models, it is a lot more hands-off. At least later on, there's a lot more hands-off. When you're first starting, there's a ton of upfront work you will not get paid for for a very long time, so have that expectation. But uh, it, unlike other business models, you don't have to worry about fulfillment. You don't have to worry about logistics. There's no customer service involved. There's no coders. There's really not anything you need to focus on outside of actually getting traffic to click that link. High quality, relevant traffic. So you get to focus really just on the marketing aspect, which makes it pretty fun. And just like other business models, you can start this one part time and it can grow into a very full time income. Uh, we have sold seven figure affiliate sites on our marketplace that are making much more money than many e-commerce store owners, many SaaS founders for that matter. So you can take this income and you can grow it to a staggering amount if you dedicate the time to actually become good at it. Before we dive more into affiliate marketing uh, in the various concepts, let's talk about what I said earlier. I talked about how content marketing can take a long time, but why is that? Why does it take so long? And the reason why comes down to margins. So a profit margin is basically how much money can you spend to sell a product or a service where you're still making a profit at the end of the day. 
if you're selling a $10 item, then you really only have $10 to work with, but actually you have less because there's, uh, if at least if you're a e-commerce store, you go, all the costs that go into making the product, filling it, shipping it, all that kind of stuff goes into that $10 margin. Now, if you're an affiliate, really the only thing that takes away the margin is your advertising expense. But because you are an affiliate, you are often learning, earning significantly less than the product owner, right? Because you're effectively just a commission salesperson for that company or product. So they need to make money off it, which means they can't give you the full profit margin. They only give you a small amount. Usually whatever their advertising costs normally are is ten, tends to be how they compensate that affiliate program. But there are obviously caveats there. Amazon actually calls this affiliate fee that they pay you an advertising fee. So as they view that, they view you as the affiliate as part of their advertising department in a sense. So because margins are much lower than if you're the actual e-commerce store owner or the service owner, you yourself are limited on what you can do in marketing. If you're only selling a $10 product or even a $500 product as an affiliate, your commissions tend to be much lower. Even on $500, your commission might actually be only 15 to maybe $50 per sale, which means you only have that much margin to work with when it comes to marketing. This kind of you know, cruel arithmetic, if you will, can make it difficult for affiliate marketers to use such things as paid traffic. You have to be pretty good to do a straight up affiliate campaign using paid advertising where you come out ahead of that. I'm not saying it can't be done. I have plenty of friends that do it, but it is difficult to do and you really have to be on top of your game or have some other creative solutions there that can help you widen that margin. So with that said, most affiliate marketers, especially ones that wanna build digital assets that they can make a lucrative exit, such as on our marketplace down the road, what they tend to focus on is a traffic strategy called SEO or search engine optimization. High level overview of search engine optimization, all it means is when someone types a keyword into Google, they go and get the results that Google shows them and they click on one of those top 10 results that are not an ad, that website owner counts you as part of their organic traffic, their SEO. So that is the traffic most affiliate marketers are building digital assets that they want to sell, focus on, because it's free. It doesn't go into any of their margins. It takes a lot of time to actually build up, but once you have it, that traffic just keeps going in and in and you don't have to monitor any campaigns or anything like that. Of course, you need to do maintenance to make sure you stay ranked on the first page of Google for those keywords, but overall it becomes pretty hands-off at that point. Of course, that also depends on what your growth goals are. If you're just looking to maintain an affiliate site, you can do that in about an hour a week, sometimes even less, depending on the quality of the site. If you're looking to grow, obviously you're gonna be spending a lot more time than an hour a week. It's just really up to you. So how do you actually get started in affiliate marketing? Well, we touched on it briefly already, and that is the keyword research aspect. All good affiliate marketing websites or even campaigns often begin with the keyword research aspect. So you need to find a niche that you can talk in and produce content in that you can also put your affiliate links on. So the first step is finding a niche, finding something that you like is usually helpful, but it doesn't have to be something you like. It doesn't have to be anything you're passionate about at all, but it does help if it is, especially if you're starting out because you usually aren't going to have a budget to outsource a lot of things. So that means it's helpful if you're at least somewhat interested in the topic. Uh, but again, it doesn't have to be, it can really be about anything you want as long as there's a niche for it. And how you find those keywords is pretty simple. There are a ton of different keyword research tools out there. You can go to tools such as Ahrefs, which is what I personally use and recommend. And you can use their keyword explorer to find a ton of keywords, an unlimited amount of keywords. If you're struggling with finding a niche because just going to the keyword explorer isn't exactly gonna be the muse of inspiration to find your niche, uh, what you can do is just go on amazon.com and because you'll probably be starting using the program anyways, you can, you can filter by all the different departments that Amazon has. What of those sub -seg segments or categories that they have intrigue you or interest you? And then look what's in there. What kind of products are being sold in there? Usually the sweet spot, especially for Amazon affiliate programs, uh, Amazon affiliate links rather, is gonna be between $50 and $300. Usually $300 is getting just above the point where someone might not do an impulse buy on it and you want people to do impulse buys with Amazon affiliate links because the time frame of you getting that commission is actually quite short. Now in other affiliate programs, obviously that uh, hard and fast rule doesn't really apply. Uh, it can, uh, depending on what their cookie time frames are, but usually between 50 and $300 is a pretty good sweet spot. So once you have found a niche that you are somewhat intrigued by, go put it into the keyword research tool in Ahrefs or whatever keyword tool you end up using and see what keywords are related around it. 
But we're looking, what we're looking for here are keywords like uh, review versus uh, our top picks, best, how, uh, any of those kind of keywords with those kind of variations are very, very important for affiliate marketing because those are going to be the basis of the articles that you're going to write. Now, once you have a niche, another thing I always recommend doing is take some of those keywords, enter it into Google and see if you can't find a few affiliate sites of your own. If you've never seen an affiliate site before, they're actually pretty easy to spot in the wild once you understand what they are. So any kind of article that shows up saying like, top 10, top 10 best blender reviews, <laughs> I can't even say it, top 10 best blender reviews, uh, our 2020 picks or something like that, that's usually a good telltale sign that's an affiliate site owner. You can go to that uh, affiliate link, or sorry, that webpage and see what affiliate links they are using. Now, maybe they're using Amazon, but maybe they're using something else. Maybe they're using a totally different vendor that has a much better affiliate program. What you wanna do in this phase of research is write down all those different affiliate networks, all those different affiliate offers that your potential competitors are using and check out if they do have an affiliate program. And usually they do if they're on that website, if they're on an affiliate website. So this can become your backlog list when you're ready to migrate away from Amazon so you can get higher commissions, but more on that later. So once you have all this stuff, usually in a spreadsheet of some sort, that is when you move on to the next stage of your affiliate marketing journal journey. What you do now is you go and actually buy a domain, get some hosting, and there is a million and one blog posts out there that can cover how to do this. So I'm not going to dive deep into it, just Google search, how do I buy a domain? How do I get hosting? All that kind of stuff. One caveat here is usually you wanna make the domain registrar where you buy the domain and your hosting company that you buy the hosting into two different companies. So that way they can own all of the assets uh, in some way and like raise prices on you. Doesn't happen very often. It's just a nugget of wisdom I picked up years ago. I personally don't know anyone where it has happened, but it seems like a scary situation. So I always recommend uh, hosting your registrar, your domain on a different registrar than your actual hosting company. Uh, but like I said, tons of blog posts online that you can go read on how to set it up and tons of walk tutorials on YouTube that you can check out if you prefer video. So once you have a website set up, I recommend using WordPress. It is a very easy to use content management system. Most people are familiar with it, but if you have no clue how to use it, it is similar to the hosting and the domain blog, uh, tutorials. There are uh, thousands, just thousands of tutorials out there on WordPress. It is by far the most popular CMS in the entire world. And especially when it comes to affiliate marketing, I, I think less than 1% of the, at this point, hundreds of affiliate sites I've seen use anything outside of WordPress is extremely rare. So you're in good hands there. There's a big community there and a lot of veterans who are making very lucrative incomes are still using WordPress. In fact, Empire Flippers, our website is for the most part hosted on WordPress. Now, if you log in and get a free account, that goes to a different software that we use, but all of our blogs, our podcasts, all that kind of stuff is all hosted on WordPress. That's what we use. So that is what I recommend for you to use as well in your affiliate marketing career. Now, once you have the website up and you put a theme, which you can just buy a theme and customize it later or hire a developer if you want, uh, you don't really have to do any of that stuff yet. I usually keep uh, any kind of affiliate website and most of my friends who start one, they usually keep it pretty simple and blank. It's not gonna win any kind of design awards, but it's not supposed to yet. Oh, the only thing you need to focus on right now is getting that website up and getting a bunch of content on it. Don't worry about design, don't worry about branding, all that stuff can come later. The most important part is just getting going. So now that you have the website up, you wanna take those that keyword research that you just did and you start organizing them all into topics. You're probably gonna have a bunch of different keywords that are all somewhat interrelated and you wanna see are these actually related by Googling each one of those keywords and see what articles come up. You might be surprised at how different some keywords are, yet the same article show up for both of them or even multiple of them. And that right there is a signal from Google that all of those keywords mean the same thing and you should put them all in the same article. Now there's a bunch of tools that you can use to help you with that. And I'll get into some of those later in this video, but don't worry about that right now. Right now, all you should do is be organizing those keywords to the best of your ability in your spreadsheet into uh, what we call topic clusters. And once you have done that, each, one, each of your article will have a handful of these keywords. You wanna take the most important one, the one that has the most search volume, or perhaps the one that is just the easiest for you to rank, depending on your goal, and write, put that in the actual headline, and the article should be primarily about that keyword, while using the other keywords throughout the article. 
once the article is actually published and you have a few articles uh, published across your blog, I usually recommend between 20 and 30 uh, blog posts published before you do this, you can actually go out and start building backlinks. A backlink is simply another website owner that is linking to your content. That's all it is. Uh, backlinks are extremely important in SEO. And speaking of what's extremely important in SEO, let me help you avoid a very common trap that people fall into when they're starting affiliate marketing. When you're learning SEO, it can feel overwhelming, especially if you spend too much time learning SEO. The more you learn from different gurus, different blogs, and different publications on SEO, it can feel the like the less you know what to do because there's just so many things to do. So let me simplify the whole process for you. All you need to focus on when you're just starting out in affiliate marketing using SEO are three things. These are the three pillars of SEO. Good keyword research, which I just covered, building uh, good backlinks from high quality referring domains, so no spammy websites. But don't worry about that too much. Just focus on building backlinks. Just think, I need to get other sites linking to me. How do I do that? And that's the main thing you want to go for. Don't dive too deep into it yet. Otherwise, you'll, you'll kill your momentum. The last thing you need to do, the last third pillar of SEO, and this is technically optional, is having high quality content. Now, I'm a content marketer, so you might be wondering like, whoa, you, you, did Greg just recommend having low quality content on my site? Well, no, I'm not. I'm recommending you to have the highest quality content as possible as your budget permits. But I say it's optional because it doesn't really matter to Google. Google is not analyzing your article while drinking a glass of wine as a, some like artisan curator of content. They're not. They're just machines. They're little digital spiders crawling your website saying he hit these words, he put this word in H2 tag, I'm gonna rank this. And it could be a total garbage article that you can rank on the first page of Google. The reason why I recommend to go high quality is because you're actually going to save a lot of money in the long run by going high quality and you're gonna convert more people. If you have a total garbage article on your blog ranking on the first page of Google, no one's probably going to convert into actual customers of clicking that affiliate link. Uh, it's gonna be rare. Your conversion rate is probably gonna be low. And then what's the point of even ranking if you're not gonna make money? So that's why I recommend having high quality content. It will help you get people to actually convert into customers and it's going to help you get actual backlinks because no one wants to link to a site that is filled with bad content unless you pay them, right? Which a lot of people do, but I do not recommend that. So again, keyword research, high quality backlinks from respectable domains and high quality content that enters the search intent for Google, but also focuses on the actual human reader so they convert into a customer where you can make some money. So that is the three things of SEO. I wouldn't dive deeper than what I just told you to do uh, if you're just starting out. Otherwise, you're gonna be lost in this endless dark spiral rabbit hole that will be very difficult for you to get out of, which means you will likely never start. So the key again, so you gotta go start it. Uh, don't worry if you don't know everything, you'll figure it out as you go. All right, now that you got the three pillars, you kind of have everything in your brain and what you need to do, let's quickly talk about what kind of content do you actually write? I mentioned a little bit earlier in this video, but you're looking for keywords that start with keywords like how to, how do I do something, or keywords that have review in it, best, top, any of those kind of things, that is what is called commercial intent, except for the how one, that's informational uh, intent, which don't really worry about this too much, but basically commercial intent just means that anyone that is searching for this keyword in Google is pretty close to making a buying decision. So if I Google best office chair of 2019, you can already tell I'm getting close. I know I wanna buy an office chair, but I don't know which one yet. So the first article I come up to that says best office shares of 2019 or 2020 or best reviews uh, ever, you know, I click that link, I read this top uh, what is called a roundup review that has maybe 10 different office chairs briefly summarized and why I would like it, the benefits and the cons of each. And then I make a decision. I might click that affiliate link and buy a $200, $300 office chair. And that website owner gets a commission from my patronage of his affiliate link, right? So that is uh, an example of commercial intent. A, a keyword that has even more commercial intent than something like best office chair would be like a, me searching for a specific brand of a chair with the keyword review at the end. So I don't know, random brand office chair review. I wanna see what other people think about this brand. Now I'm reading an article about this specific product, which is probably a much more in-depth review. So when you're starting your affiliate site, look for these kind of opportunities. The keywords that you're gonna be able to make the most money off of the quickest, though it won't be the most money in, in the long run, but it will be in the short run, 
is single product reviews. So talking about a single brand, you have that brand name in the article, in the review, the article is clearly just about this one specific product and versus reviews. So versus reviews would be like office chair A versus office chair B review, right? Which one is better of these two items? Which one, which one of these can solve my problems better? And in that kind of article, you are comparing both of the chairs against each other, the pros and cons of each, and telling the reader which one is probably the best one for them if they have X, Y, and Z issues, right? If you have lower back pain, this chair is probably better. If you have issues with your neck, maybe this chair is better, or, you know, uh, whatever it might be. So those kind of articles are probably going to make you the most money the fastest. And then you want to do the roundup articles, like I mentioned, where you feature like top 10. And in addition to all of this, you'll want to write informational articles. So that is again, the how to, or maybe the history of office chairs, the evolution of chairs, you know, whatever keywords you have on informational topics. A lot of times the informational topics are going to be how you get the backlinks. So they're very, very important. The composition of a brand new affiliate site, I mentioned 30 articles. I think 30 articles is good to start going out there and building backlinks. But if you want a really like full fledged affiliate site that I think might have some teeth and can explode and make some good money, I usually recommend about 100 articles. Now that seems like a lot. You don't have to do it all at once though. What I recommend is get the first 30 articles up on there, go and start building backlinks and build out the last 70 over a period of time, whatever your budget or time permits you to do. So start with 30, start building some backlinks and then get up to that 100. Out of that 100, I would say a good ratio is having about 60 pieces of commercial intent. So those are your reviews, your roundups, your versus posts. And then the last 40 or so articles can be all that informational intent. Because again, you don't wanna look like just like you're selling things all the time. You wanna look like you're actually providing value and hopefully your content is good enough you actually are providing value, which some SEOs don't do. You should do that because you will build a much better brand if you do that. So that is the co uh, composition of how you build an affiliate site. Now keep in mind, everything I just said here, this is like the highlights, the big overview of affiliate marketing. Everything I just said here is gonna take time. It's not like you can publish, a, even if you did publish a hundred articles in a single day, it is unlikely you're gonna make much money even in the first three or four months. Traditionally, I don't see affiliate sites that are brand new make anything typically for six to 12 to sometimes even 18 months after they started. And when they do start making money, it can feel pretty disappointing because I'm talking usually about like maybe 50 bucks, maybe a hundred dollars. It by no means matches how much work and sweat equity or money that you put into this site. And that's just the way they are. But if you stick through it for a few more months, the moment you start making consistent money, say that $50 a month, you keep doing that, then the next month is 100 bucks, next month is 300 bucks, next month is $3,000. Affiliate sites grow in a very snowball avalanche kind of way. And that's because it takes time for those articles to rank, like I mentioned. So if you're consistently putting in new content week after week into this site, over a period of time, you will have a cluster of articles that start ranking well in Google. And when that happens, your affiliate income is gonna go way, way up. It's gonna jump from uh, different levels over and over again. And I see this all the time. A lot of times uh, affiliate marketers give up on like month five or month six if they're really determined and they're like, well, this doesn't work, but it does work if you just stick around to it. And again, I, like you should have the expectation of a timeline of working on this site probably for at least 18 months if you want it to be significant. So just keep that in mind. Now, you can go much faster, by the way. I'm not saying you can't go faster uh, than what I just said, uh, but usually the skill sets you need to go faster are a lot more advanced. And considering you're watching a video about affiliate marketing for beginners, it's probably not you and that's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. And again, the most important part of this whole thing, if you haven't realized, I've said this like a million times already in this video, is just actually go and do it. That is the most important thing that most people don't actually do. They'll buy the course, they read the blog post, they listen to the podcast, but they never actually go and do. So that's the thing that you need to focus on the most and just realize you're gonna make a lot of mistakes along the way and that's okay. You got an 18 month timeline and you give it good consistent effort. For the most part, you should be able to see at least some positive signs of growth, if not at least some encouraging amount of income. So one last thing before I get to my bonus, I want to mention something that some affiliate marketers do. So you can do this. I'm not saying you don't have to, or I'm not saying you shouldn't do this. 
Uh, if I was building an affiliate site, I wouldn't do it because I always had the end goal of I want to sell whatever I build. So if I'm building a digital asset, I want to sell that uh, website for $100,000 or $600,000 or maybe even seven figures one day, right? So the, the strategy that some SEOs use to rank on Google quicker is called an EMD or exact match domain. So if I'm selling red blenders, let's say, I, there's a ton of keyword volume for about red blenders, all by the domain bestredblenders.com. That's an EMD, exact match domain, exactly matching the main keyword I'm going after. Now on paper, this actually can make you rank much quicker. You can rank potentially and start making money in 30 to 50 days, right? Uh, maybe even shorter than that, depending on the EMD and the keyword competition. The reason why I don't recommend this though, is because you're, you, you, you're stilting your site, you're penalizing your ability to grow as a brand. If I own the website topbestredblenders.com, I'd say I magically grew this website to being a $200,000 website, almost no one's gonna buy that website from me. Now, on the other hand, if I name that site kitchenhero.com and the first 200 articles are all about blenders, and I get that website to $200,000 a year or $200,000 in terms of its valuation to sell, investors and buyers are gonna be a lot more interested in that website because they can easily expand the website. The brand, Kitchen Hero, it lends itself for me to talk about anything related to the kitchen now, right? Talk about bread makers, coffee makers, all sorts of different things. It doesn't just have to be about blenders. So when you're going to build your site, consider a good brand name that allows you to grow beyond your initial keyword research. Now, again, you should start narrow. So maybe you are a kitchen hero and the first 200 articles you write are all about blenders. You're gonna become one of the top experts on blender technology, right? But there's no problem with that because you can always expand at a later date into the other stuff, into all the other topics. And now you get to use that domain that you've built that's very strong. Over time, it'll actually start ranking a bunch of other keywords much, much quicker. At Empire Flippers, our domain rating, which is a metric that Ahrefs uses to describe how powerful a website is, usually hovers around 73, sometimes 74. When I publish something that has keyword focus on the Empire Flippers blog, there's a very strong chance I'll be ranking for that keyword, if not on page one, at least in the top three pages, within a week of publishing it. That's how powerful domain rating is. So if you focus on the long-term brand life of your affiliate site, ranking for keywords over time just becomes a lot easier as your website becomes more powerful. Okay, so let's, let's wrap everything up here. Right now from this probably far too long video, if you are still watching, that means you know more about affiliate marketing, SEO, and really online business than 99% of the people out there. You have all the tools you need right now to really go out there and start playing around with this concept of affiliate marketing. And just remember, have that timeline that expectation that is going to take a while and keep at it and be consistent. Affiliate marketing can be a fantastic low cost way for you to get some real, really lucrative side income going on top of your job or whatever else you're doing. Also affiliate marketing, as you level up your skills and knowledge in the space, you can make an incredible amount of money in it. You can be, it can be an extremely lucrative. I have friends, even in the Amazon associate program that are making 30, $40,000 a month from just two different websites. And that is not a terribly uncommon story. I'm not saying that you are going to go do it. Most people will never get to that level, but it is a real possibility. And in fact, even that level is not the highest you can go. I have seen sites that are making well over hundred thousand, sometimes over $200,000 a month from affiliate income alone. So there's definitely real room to grow here. And the nice thing is it doesn't cost that much money to actually start. Domain and hosting will probably run you about $15, maybe $50 a year to do. And if you're writing all the content yourself, you're not paying for it. If you're doing all the backlink uh, outreach, which is also annoying, but if you don't, you don't pay for it, then you are effectively just paying $50 a year to build this content business. And over time, that content business can grow into being a very significant thing. Now, real quick on the Amazon Associates program, I mentioned earlier a little bit about Amazon Associates, and I wanted to cover it uh, more, especially since I'm using it in the title here. Amazon Associates can be a very powerful program, and it used to be a lot more powerful than it is today. Before, you used to get much higher commissions, and it was just a lot easier to use. And over the years, they've really clamped down. They've reduced the commissions twice in the last four years, sometimes very significantly. I had friends 
who are again doing that 30K a month. Now they're doing 15K a month and they're like, whoa, what happened? You know, still making really good money, but they're making half of what they were, right? So I always recommend if you're starting out in affiliate marketing, look at Amazon as kind of like the starter program because usually they're like, their affiliate program is pretty slick. It's pretty easy to use and understand versus a lot of other affiliate programs. So it's a good place to learn, but look for niches where you can go outside of Amazon eventually. You don't wanna be stuck in Amazon, especially because they don't really care that much about their affiliates. They care more about the legal implications of what their affiliates might be doing. So they're not really there to help you as much. You are literally just an ad in their eyes versus other affiliate programs. They view you as an actual person and they wanna work with you and they can often give you much better commissions with larger uh, time windows for that cookie and tend to be a lot more lucrative over time. Plus with uh, uh, other affiliate programs, as you get good at this, you can usually work with whoever is running that program to improve their actual sales process, their actual marketing funnels, which will in turn improve your commissions. You get to have a more two-way street with other affiliate programs. But again, Amazon Associates is a fantastic place to start. I just recommend looking for a niche that can grow outside of just Amazon eventually. Okay, so let's get into the bonus of what we can do here, what I mentioned at the top. Now I've just really laid down the law here and I'm about to throw that rule completely out the window. I said you cannot make money very fast in affiliate marketing. You should have an 18 month timeline at least, but I'm about to break that by telling you how you can make money right now from affiliate marketing right away. And how you do that is if you have a you know, good capital, a good amount of money to spend, you can come to a marketplace like us and just buy an affiliate site that's already making money. We have websites that are making between $2,000 a month all the way up to $15,000 and $40,000 a month in affiliate sites. And that's always changing, by the way. We release new businesses for sale every single week on Mondays. So definitely subscribe to our list if that's something you're interested in. And quick note here, if you decide to buy an affiliate site to skip that 18-month timeline to something that's already making money and has you know, proof of concept, if you decide to do that, some quick low-hanging fruit that you can go after, some quick wins, are first looking at adding display ads. So a lot of affiliate sites, not all of them, but a lot of affiliate sites only focus on affiliate income. There's actually other ways to make money with these websites. And one of the most common ways to make money outside of affiliate links is display ads. You embed display ads on your website, such as AdSense, Mediavine, or AdThrive, and that's it. When someone clicks one of those ads, you get paid, even if they don't buy anything. You're just getting paid for delivering the ad that got the click. And yes, you're gonna make less money than affiliate links with this, because the margins are even smaller than affiliate, uh, but it can be a nice way to boost up your net profit. I've seen this boost net profit between 10 and 15% sometimes on affiliate sites that had no display ads at all. It very rarely takes away affiliate income. I personally have never seen uh, display ads take away from affiliate income. In fact, I've seen the opposite effect where the affiliate income goes up because people, weirdly enough, tend to trust sites that have ads more, which is strange, but yeah. Uh, so adding display ads like that can take literally just like an hour's worth of work if you know how to do it, maybe a few hours if you're not very tech savvy. And usually, especially if you're using someone like Mediafine or AdThrive, they're going to have reps that can walk you through how to install it. So nice they just install it for you. So that is a very easy way right out of the gate after you buy an affiliate site making money, uh, how you can increase that net profit even more. Another thing you should do is what is called conversion rate optimization or CRO as it's commonly referred to. What CRO is, is basically you're taking the same amount of traffic and you're making it so that traffic becomes your customer and gives you money at a better rate. So if you have a thousand visitors a day and only 200 people become customers, which that's a crazy conversion rate. So that's not a real conversion rate there. Uh, let's say you do CRO on that and now you're getting 300 out of that thousand. You're not getting any more traffic than you were before, but you're actually making 30% more money or something like that uh, than you were before from the same exact traffic. And that's the power of CRO. All you have to do is set up a software like VWO. By the way, all the resources here will be in the description below. Uh, all you have to do is set up a software like VWO and it can set uh, these different changes that split test two different variations of your web page. And if you don't wanna do it yourself, that sounds too technical for you. There's tons of different agencies out there that'll do it for you. So with CRO, uh, once it's set up, you know, a few hours to set up the test, usually takes about a week or two weeks to get the results. And I have seen this once the results are in and people make the final switch to the winner of those two pages, I have seen income on this go up from 20 to 50% in terms of the net profit. 
Now, your results may vary, of course. It could be nothing, right? Maybe you've made the wrong changes or just there's no more juice to squeeze out of that fruit. But that tends not to be the case because most affiliate sites don't have good design, which is why I told you don't worry about design earlier in this video because it's really not that important until you get going. Once you are going though, you do wanna focus on design and CRO is when you really should be looking into design. So the last thing I'll tell you, the third, well, actually there's two more of quick wins that you can do if you buy an affiliate site that's already making money is looking at optimizing all of the content. So this is an advanced SEO strategy where you use a tool such as clearscope.io or Surfer SEO to really hone in your on-page SEO. Now you, I'll link both, to both of those tools in the video down below, and you can check out those tools if you're already in a place where you wanna optimize content. All optimizing content means is you're making Google like that content even more, which means Google is gonna rank you closer to the number one spot and you get a lift of traffic from the same exact amount of content. It's just more optimized for Google's robots to rank. And that's that's it. Uh, so the final, final quick win here on affiliate sites for you if you buy one. And again, all of this stuff I'm saying, you can do this on an affiliate site you're building once it's making money, but it's just quicker to do it if you buy a site because it already has traffic coming to it. Uh, so the last thing is open up Ahrefs again and do a ton of keyword research, create a ton of article briefs and outsource it to a content agency to start pumping out dozens of articles for you a day or a week, whatever your budget uh, is and however big your niche is. And once you have all those articles, publish them right away. Don't do any kind of drip campaign. It doesn't matter in terms of consistency there. Usually some niches maybe, but from what I've seen, usually it doesn't matter. You wanna get all of that content published on your website as fast as possible. Also run it through Surfer SEO or ClearScope so it's already optimized out of the gate and you get to take advantage of the strength of your website where you can start getting even more SEO traffic coming to your site. So those are the quick wins if you buy an affiliate site and I hope you enjoyed that bonus. If you are someone who wants to buy an affiliate site, you can come check out our marketplace down below. Uh, you can register a free Empire Flippers account where you'll be able to see literally dozens of online businesses for sale. We are the biggest marketplace in the world when it comes to curated online businesses. So if you want to see that, go ahead and register for a free account below. Now, if you already have an affiliate site that's making money and you want to sell it, then check out our valuation tool, which will also be down below. Our valuation tool uses real sales back data to give you an estimation of what your affiliate website is worth and what it could be sold for on our marketplace. So what did you think? Was this a good overview of affiliate marketing for beginners or would you like to have seen more? Are you building some affiliate marketing sites right now? Go ahead and tell me about them. Don't reveal the niche though. A lot of SEOs will want to copy you. Just tell me about your experience in affiliate marketing and if you found this video helpful as a comment below. If you do find this video helpful, by the way, I would also love it if you subscribe, hit the bell. I do educational content on online business, marketing, and buying and selling online businesses as digital assets all the time on this channel. And it would really mean a lot to me if you subscribe. Talk to you soon. Bye.